All right, let's depart. Labana says, I find her one of the easier champs to break the game with. Well, maybe that's a gap in my um, game creativity or game knowledge. I'm, I'm sure there are ways to, uh, to use her very effectively. Really good with Remnant. Yes, definitely I could see that. Since she's both good at both killing and creating units. So in our starting deck, we got a couple random cards here. Helical Crystallis. Deals 25 to the front enemy twice for two cost and two Ritual of Battles, which are big rage appliers. If we can get a multi-striker or a sweeper, these can be quite good. Stygian does have access to a couple units with sweep. Every run starts by choosing an upgrade line for the champ and gaining an artifact. I'm going to go artifact first here. A consumed crown can cause our units to scale as they get kills. That's pretty good. Or concussive coals has a chance to daze enemies on the bottom floor and can make bottom floor setups a lot more viable in general. Hmm. Both of these are pretty broadly useful. I like the Consume Crown upping our damage output a lot, and if we do get a Sweeper, this will work even better. Let's take a Consume Crown. It's also a nice way to get a bit of bonus stats for the first couple battles. Alright, what champ line are we going to go? Summon an Imp every turn? I think the higher tier Imp Parade generates Rage Imps, does it not? It's pretty good. Meanwhile, the Imperialist version kills any Imps on her floor and kind of uses them as an AoE bomb. Does the Sacrifice Queen count as Slay? I don't think so. Hmm. After dealing a killing blow, kill all impudence. Yeah, I don't think so. Labana says the Tier 2 generates Rage, Tier 3 generates Rage and Armor. I want more imps. Let me try imp parade here. And I'm not I'm not 100% sure if it's correct here, but I almost always go for divine horde to look at uh, one of three artifacts when it's presented early. Looking at a large number of artifacts during a monster train run makes it uh, a lot easier to find the really impactful ones, and already we're looking at a run that would really like uh, Ashes of the Fallen, for example, the artifact that doubles your summon effects. That said, Tethys' scales to apply spell weakness can really make uh, Helical Crystallis hit certain enemies harder, or Pyrestone Housing, giving a third upgrade slot to units, can be huge for uh, a run overall. Go double Merchant of Steel, too. I'll take this. I like a good Pyrestone housing run. Okay, so let's showcase the basic mechanics of Monster Train in our first battle here. The first defense. Attackers hidden in the back line. Got to take them down. Don't have an easy way to do that. But I think we can just brute force our way through this fight. With every combat, you're offered a trial. Take an additional challenge to get an additional reward. And when that reward is a unit draft, I think it's almost required that you take the challenge because they're so dang valuable here in the early game. Yeah, and these nerds are very easy to deal with. You can just go a boop. And a boop. And yes, to answer the question earlier, an imp killing an enemy when coming into play counts as a slay for the consumed crown. Actually, maybe I'm putting you on the bottom, question mark? No, let's put the short tail queen on the top floor here. So, there are three different floors in your train, in monster train. Each floor has a limited capacity, indicated by these yellow pips. Um, 
There are five capacity on the top and bottom floor. That's the base capacity of a floor. The middle one only has four pips because of one of the Covenant penalties. Covenant 20 takes uh, minus one capacity off the middle floor. And every unit that we play has a variable cost in capacity on that floor. We can only put as many units as the floor has room for, and there are ways to make the floors have more or less space on them. Well, that's an intimidating floor. Hmm. I smell trouble here. These two backline uh, archer fellows are going to be a serious issue for us. Unfortunately, we only have two ember this turn because playing a unit on the top floor uh, has a penalty associated with it of one ember drain. Um, and this collector here will give us money if we can kill it before it gets away at the end of the turn. 50 gold, which is pretty important. That said, so is not getting stabbed by a bunch of archers, and I think we have to play the Helical Crystallis on this Forged Disciple to avoid disaster here. Does this game have meta progression, asks Pikachu down. No. No, you do unlock some cards with experience for the clans, um, and there are unlockable difficulty levels. Notably, the first Covenant actually makes the game easier. And then they start getting a lot harder from there, such that Covenant 25 is is quite challenging. But there is no no meta progression, no unlock tree, nothing to keep working towards in terms of making the game easier. It, it is just quite uh, quite brutal sometimes. That's right. If the if the unit dies before your next turn or is otherwise removed from play, the Ember Drain won't take any energy away from you. All right, well, I think with the, the board state, we, we ultimately have to eliminate this enemy here. So that we can pick these off as they ascend. So we'll let the collector get away. That's fine. Ooh, na na. That's right, you nerds. Have a friendo. And a dad joke for the crowd for always going to throw. What do you call an imp in a tuxedo? Impeccably dressed. You know, we've actually got good use for branding right here. This is a spell that deals five damage to a unit and then applies 20 armor to it. You can either use it as an armor gaining spell or you can use it to kill weak enemies. It's kind of uh, flexible here. I have some ice. Dang it. It's hoping we could ice him twice. So nice, I iced him twice. Again? Okay, this time we get to ice twice. Excellent. And let's put a terrain steward in front of our queen here. Boss head getting trampled, unfortunately, allows it to kill all those imps at the same time. But that red X indicates that the boss is perishing before they would get up to our pyre here. That's good news. Get blip blapped, sir. GG. Or offered some imps directly here. Apply rage to friendly units or apply armor to the front friendly unit. I think we want one of these imps. Totally get it, Voidify. I've, I've heard uh, comments numerous times to the effect of like, oh, this looks like a mobile game or um, what's with the, the like 2D animations that look off. Uh, it, it's definitely a visual style that's uh, not for everybody. It's a, a little oddly cartoonish, flat, 
and uh, a, a kind of pseudo 3D perspective that can, I think for some, uh, cause a little bit of motion sickness at times. But that's only for, for some people. Other people are like, oh, it just looks, I like the way this game looks. Looks great. I like the art. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit in between. I, I can see some of the, like, strings behind the puppet moment where it, you, you get a, a glimpse of something that doesn't quite seem right. But I don't know. I, I really have no objections. I think there's a, a lot of cool visuals in the game. It's, it's definitely uh, cartoony, but not in a problematic way for me. Um, yeah, but I, I totally get it. Some games you just don't, you just clash with visually and you don't want to, don't want to play them. Uh, I got sent a key a while back for a, a deck building game that had the, the premise of like, you're a contestant on a, a game show wearing animal suits, like giant rabbit costume thing, uh, kind of like a little bit Five Nights at Freddy's visually, and I just it not, I, I couldn't do it. Could not do it. So I get it. Some, sometimes games, or uh, actually a game I can really point to that um, I, I took one look at, and I was like, I don't, I don't want to look at this game for more than five minutes. I don't care if it's a good game. I don't want to play Tainted Grail Conquest. I got, I, a lot of people suggested that, and it's a, supposedly a, a pretty enjoyable deck building experience, but I don't want to look at that game. So, I didn't play it. Hyrule says, that's me in Binding of Isaac. I... Good Binding of Isaac, man. I uh, I have watched a lot of Binding of Isaac, and I think it's a very cool game, conceptually, in some ways. I think it's also a terribly designed game in other ways. Um, but the visuals and the art style of Binding of Isaac are the reason I've never played nor streamed it myself. But yeah, I think Binding of Isaac is a really good one to point to for that. Which is not to hold up Spire as an example of perfect art either. Spire's got uh, minimalistic and some weird cartoony art at times. Like, what even is the Guardian exactly? Take a close look at the Guardian sprite in Spire sometime. It's just... It's just weird. Looks very w work in progress. You definitely, it's one of the first enemies they made for the game, but they never like went back and redid it. You can tell. Stickman boy. Very surreal weirdo art. Yeah, the, the background to act three, everything in act three really is just odd. Crip Rat Daddy says, Bertato is one that I can't really look at for, wrong, for long. That I get too. The, the color scheme alone in Bertato is a bit odd. I was hoping that uh, part of Brotato's early access period would include uh, giving you more than just a, a blank square field to play the game on. But it seems that hasn't uh, has not occurred. Guy on spiky stilts. Spire louse design is perfect in all ways. I, I think they really nailed the gremlins. The 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 happy feet dance of the sneaky gremlin. It's a good time. Anywho, let's pick one of these uh, imps here. And I'm thinking. I'm thinking I want more rage. That's what I'm thinking. How do we not want to run with flash freeze yet? Interesting. Ice Tornado is a bit weird with the foregone powers. I'll take one flash freeze. This is targeted backline damage, something we currently don't have a lot of access to. More options for Rage here. Our unit draft shows us some um, unit cards. I am a big fan of Demon Fiend. Actually, if we can find a sweeper to go with Demon Fiend, we're going to have a good time. 
I, I'm thinking more and more this deck is going to want a sweeper. Demon Fiend is a very big beefy unit, but the Ember cost of four means the Demon Fiend cannot be played normally, which is definitely an, uh, a bit of an obstacle. Often better used as a so-called infusion into another unit. You can merge two units together in a place called a Divine Temple to... You sacrifice one unit and apply the essence, the stat changes here, uh, to a second unit. I think that's what I'm going to try to do with this Demon Fiend here. He Who Watches says, Your view of Branded Warrior changed so much climbing the Covenants. How so? Did it get better or worse? It's a card I don't hold in very high regard. Just because the, the, the payoff is not that much in terms of rage per enemy you kill. And it can be quite difficult to get the uh, the warrior to get kills. Got worse. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I find that it's just a little bit too awkward. Bitwise Bard says, Any tips for Stygian? Trying to get a win with each combination, but you're horrible with that faction. Embrace the spell damage. Don't be afraid to visit Merchants of Magic. Put spell damage upgrades into your spells. Um... And if you're playing with the Last Divinity DLC, get some of those Extreme Stones, the plus 30 magic power upgrades, and put them on an attuned spell. It's relatively easy for Stygian to make a spell card that does 200 damage or more. And that can really be key to winning the mid to late game. You can, you can absolutely just use spells to just blap through everything that's a problem. You'll need units to support that. Uh, depending on which champ you're using, it might be easier or harder. I really like going the Blap strategy on the Tethys line that gets a discounted damage spells. Channel Titan or whatever. How would I rate this game by the first 10 or so hours of gameplay? I, I remember not liking Monster Train very much with the first 10 hours, especially before the, the DLC came along. Uh, I didn't didn't like it all that much. But it's only grown on me more and more as I've gotten more familiar and more practiced at it. And listened to the soundtrack more and more, which ages very well. Hey, Mr. Fishhead. I did see that Mr. Beast tweeted at me, on, uh, which was quite, quite tickling. Very tickled by that. My tiny claim to internet fame grows slightly larger. Yeah, Mr. Beast tweeted at me that, that he beat A20 Spire. He's like, are you proud of me, Dad? I am, son. I am proud. So, I wanted to go to the Merchant of Magic here, because we're looking at Stygian banners. I'm trying to find a unit with sweep, so that we can try to break the game here. Now he's got to do Monster Train next. That's right. That's right. There it is, sweep. Excellent. I don't really care about anything else this unit has. What I care about is that it says sweep on it. That's it. That's all I care about here. Yeah, sweep and three upgrade slots. And we're going to give it plus 30, plus 30 with the Demon Fiend. And we're going to give it plus two every time it kills something. So my hope is that we can give it quick and multi-strike and a large stone or something absurd with our upgrades. Maybe that won't happen. Uh, but mostly that means we need some money st stockpiled for this Merchant of Steel. Oh man, we can dupe. Oh, it's going to be a good time. We're going to have some powerful, powerful units. Is it called Sweep because it's going to clean up the enemy waves? I think it sure is. It's going to clean house, is what it's going to clean. Uh, I'll probably buy the two cheap upgrades here. Let's, let's see what the artifact is first. Sketches of Salvation. The start of battle, summon four random units from your deck to the middle floor. Hmm. Interesting. It's pretty bad with imps. But we could definitely do some silly stuff with that. Like, really silly stuff with that. I would have to aggressively remove the imp cards, though. Huh. 
Let's see, we got Vortex Hellvent, no Vortex here. Vortex, no Vortex. Ooh, we don't even get that many removals. I don't think we can do this. Space of Diamond says, what deck wants sketches? I find that the order of summon units always goes unfavorably. Uh, one of the most optimal ones, so to speak, is just a deck with four really big units. Just like four times Shadow Siege is the only units in the deck. And then you just start with four Shadow Siege in play and they crush everything. But that's usually the idea. You get to exactly four units, ideally four units that have enormous energy or capacity costs along with giant stats to go with because putting them into play for free means you get to ignore that. Multiple Keeper of Echoes. I like that, Nikita. Four Keeper of Echoes, such that you get plus four, plus four on each of them for every time you gain a charged Echo. Egg units. Although eggs... Eggs don't get to double dip on uh, Echoes. You have to feed them one at a time. Could still work out pretty well. Totem Fragment is kind of nice here because anything that gets to the top floor is going to eat big boosted spell damage, although we don't have that many spells. Yeah, for shooting leaks, exactly. Seaweed is nice for shutting down problematic floors later, and uh, which is actually quite important for uh, sweeping units, actually. So I am going to take the seaweed here. Chance to apply silence, which disables enemy activated effects. Uh, we're also going to discount these Ritual of Battles. Now that we have a Sweeper, we have a really good target for... Rage. Do Sketches also ignore things like Extract Cost? Yes, so you can also use Sketches to put Glug Cider into play for essentially free. Spikes 3, huh? I think we can deal with that. These are already spiky units. They're just going to be even spikier now. Actually, silence doesn't stop these enemies. Hmm. Fun problem. I think I'm going to put the short tail queen on the bottom this time. Uh, partially because I can give her rage right now. We can wipe out this wave entirely, although the short tail queen will take quite a bit of damage in so doing. I think that's fine. Okay, very good wave uh, floored to use our Silophyte on. Where's this floor? Not so much. Spell Shield and Spikes 6. That's a lot of spikes. Wait, how am I going to beat the boss here? Hmm. Who'd for thought? Spikes six. Okay, you get to live. None of this matters. Okay, okay. Work out okay. Just need a chump blocker down there. That spell shield one. Hmm. Give you some armor. Uh, 
Uh, might as well do this as well. Get a bit of protection there. Spikes are so real, though. All right, so the boss has spikes, too. Everything has spikes. It's a lot of spikes, really. Hmm. Problematic amount of spikes. A little concerned here. We don't seem like we're uh, winning now, do we? We have some powerful spells we can use here. Actually, we're going to be able to do lots of damage with Helical Crystallis next turn. Um, but we have to use the Fledgling Imp if we want double spell damage here. Mercury 03, thanks for 15 months. How the time flies. I am going to try out uh, Dorcas Dungeon 2 when it comes out, Hoder the Door. I don't know that I'll be playing much of it, but I'll at least give it a try, definitely. Good. So, spell weakness is applied to the boss. Here's where having the uh, additional spell weakness would have helped a lot. But we can still deal enough damage to the boss here, such that we're not outright losing, at least. I was actually a little concerned we would lose outright here. But we only take 14 damage to our Pyre and the boss perishes. Vent's a nice way to deal damage to all enemies. Hornbreak is a more reliable way to deal damage to a specific enemy. The Ascend effect allows us to get more units on a floor than would normally be allowed, and that can be quite powerful, too. It's worth considering here. Take a horn break. Kiko Hernandez, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Mollusk Mage, one of my favorite units on uh, Stygian here, gives bonus spell power to a, current, to a floor. I don't think this is the unit for this run. Um, nor do I necessarily want an Ice Tornado or Titan's Gratitude. Although it'd be nice to have something to receive spell power stacking on. Okay, I'll take the Titan's Gratitude. Hey, Kinto Bean, excellent question. When is it better to let cards like Dazed or Ascender's Bane exhaust when the alternative is to simply scry them away? If you can simply avoid drawing them in the first place, then uh, that is, generally speaking, better than letting them exhaust. However, if you have to keep scrying it away, then you're you're losing out on the potential to scry strikes or defends out of this discard, uh, the draw pile, or the ability just to look a little bit further ahead on your turns. So... The, the essentially calculation you're going to have to perform is how many times through the deck will we cycle in the current combat and how many how many scries will it cost to keep this card around if you can spend just one draw to avoid having to scry 10 times in like the awakened one fight or something then that's when it would be worth it so the longer the fight the more worth it is to to exhaust but if you're in a hallway fight, something that's going to end in three turns, you should probably just avoid drawing it in the first place. find it really funny you need to spell to make a unit walk up the stairs. You know, they really should just be able to do that. And having played Wild Frost, I feel like I should be able to reposition each and every one of my units every single turn for free. No cost at all. Wild Frost lets you do it. Why not? Maximus the Gluteus, thanks for the prime sub in the 14 months. Keep on keeping on, friends. All right, we're, the, we're yeah, there's Multi-Strike. We're definitely going to install Multi-Strike, meaning our Icy Silophyte gets to an attack an additional time. And we're going to use the Divine Temple to sacrifice the Demon Fiend. 
and merge with the icy silophyte, such that this unit is now sweep, hit every unit on the floor twice for 31 damage, and apply spell weakness to all of them twice. Why not check the unit banner before I did that? I probably should have. You're correct. I got a little ahead of myself there. For example, we could have uh, switched to Colcalia instead. Or picked up this Guard of the Unnamed. It's armor when casting a spell. Yes, I, I should have looked at this first. You're absolutely correct. But I had a plan. Do I even want to go to the Unnamed here? Not convinced that I do. I think we will be duplicating the uh, Abomination we've just created. And then going to another Merchant of Steel and upgrading the separate Abominations. Fortunately, we can't reroll out the Merchant of Steel and then buy the second major upgrade. But if I'm going to dupe this unit, I should probably p p purchase one of the cheap upgrades of the Merchant of Steel. Because we're going to duplicate with the small stat bonus. Is there some kind of ascension level in this game? Yes, it's called Covenant. There are 25 of them, because yikes, that's a lot. And we're playing on the highest one. That stacks all 25 of these penalties that you can see, some of which are duplicate penalties. Uh, gist of it, with Covenant 25, you start at half health. You have way more cards in the starting deck, including two unremovable deadweight cards. Um, and you get an energy penalty every time you play a unit on your top floor once per turn. It's tough stuff. Three favorite deck builders, uh, definitely this one, along with, of course, Slay the Spire. And if I were to point to a third, I might choose Griftlands. I really enjoyed Griftlands. And yes, Covenant levels are shared in this game, so you, you don't have to do it per clan or anything. I think we're just skipping here. Alright, so do I want 5 and 10? I think I just want more HP. Keep these units super alive. Yeah, let's do this. And then we'll hope for Quick as the final upgrade. I played across the obelisk before. We did do a little bit of across the obelisk. I thought it was uh, qu quite neat. Or, you know, multiplayer, four player. Uh... Deck builder, essentially, like four players slay the spire. Definitely gets a little chaotic with all the status effects stacking that I saw. Not sure if I should make a zero-cost Ritual of Battle or split these upgrades here. Maybe we can double-stack this ritual. Let's, let's upgrade this one. I was just thinking we could make it intrinsic. That's another fun option. That way I could play the Silophyte and give it 10 Rage on turn one. That's pretty strong, man. I like it. It's a good head start to the to the stuff. So that puts us all the way up to 80 shards, which means our enemies are going to be much, much stronger here. However, I don't think we're going to care. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I guess that's the third upgrade slot. Sure. Or we could give it even more power. We could make the biggest Silophyte ever. A 5 capacity, 61 by 2 unit. Or we can make it extra schmoll. Cost only 1 capacity, such that we could have 2 on the same floor. Yeah, kind of a shame that we didn't didn't take the final upgrade there, but hindsight is indeed 2020. Could have five on the same floor. 
Guess that means I don't need to go to the Merchant of Steel anymore. That's kind of cool. Yes, yeah, since we're going to dupe it, I think going the, the small stone is probably the better way to do it. But if only we had taken sketches of salvation, like, sketches would start to look better and better and better had we taken it, right? This game come recommended to me. Uh, recommended to me because of Slay the Spire. Uh, the Monster Train kind of swept through the Slay the Spire community at the time that it released. Um, so basically everybody who was full-time streaming or lots of streaming Spire took a look at this game and played it for at least a couple of weeks. It was a big deal. I, I like Jorbs went super hard at this game when it uh, released, for example. But it's stuck with me. I, I like it now with the, the Last Divinity DLC and all. One of the early Spire-inspired games. I think I'd, I'd say that's a pretty good description. I prefer Monster Train over Rogue Book. I find Monster Train's way more replayable than Rogue Book. The difficulty system in Rogue Book is ultimately really limiting. That's what I found. Where Bomb doesn't get to explode. That's tough, man. Let's go top floor. Why not? Also, yeah, actually, we want the tiny Silophytes because we can then use them with the Rage Imps. Of course, that makes more sense. Don't be foolish. Two thorns. Or not two thorns. That is the question. Take out the chunky one. Basically, we just want the boss back to come back to the top floor so we can penalize him more. The powerful spells. Nice. That's right, and every kill gives the sweeper more attack power, too. Very loud visually, yes, E-Dog. We were talking about the, the visual style of Monster Train earlier. It's it's not for everyone, definitely. Totally understandable. Yeah. Yeah, the, the visual effects are they're bright and colory, everything is animated. The cards are animated, the enemies are animated. The crystalline glow that buffed enemies get is, is very complicated visually. It definitely looks like a lot. Which can be a bit much. Have a Rage Imp! Excellent. We want to hit Daedalus with a spell here, but... Doesn't really do anything. I mean, you want visually noisy, let's turn the speed up to super ultra. I'll show you visually noisy. Yep, take a look at that. Super Plus Ultra. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it almost incomprehensible. I, I don't run at uh, full speed, usually, for that reason, actually. It's just how it's meant to be played. Alright, boss is super destroyed. Get whipped. If I was to recommend one deck builder other than Slay the Spire, it would be this one, Asui Kitsune. Absolutely. 
Ooh, armor. Ice and Pyre. We haven't actually won with Ice and Pyre yet. That's a good reason to pick it up here. Ice and Pyre does tons of damage to the front enemy unit, but can only be played if you are on the top floor of the train. I'll take it. More of the same. I'm pretty sure we don't need any units other than the ones we've already grabbed. So we'll skip here. What are my thoughts on Across the Obelisk? As a, as a deck builder slash rogue game, uh, I find it mechanically noisy in the way that this game is visually noisy. You've got unnecessary status effects and buff icons and cards that are doing things that don't actually matter. Um, but is is really noteworthy just for being unique in that it's a, a four-player cooperative deck builder, of which there are basically no other games. So if you're looking for a, a multiplayer deck building experience, then strong recommend. My verdict on Wild Frost. Adorably cute, nightmarishly difficult. Quite punishing. I, I like it. We'll be back to Wild Frost some more. Great soundtrack, too, to Wild Frost. My favorite Dark Souls build, just the style. Hmm. Big Hammer. I'm going to go with a big, big crushing weapon. Ideally, uh, a, a war hammer of some kind. There's actually precious few war hammers proper in the Dark Souls games. Mostly you have to use the, the, the blacksmith hammers, at least for the earlier games. But I'm definitely a hammer fan. So I'd say high, high strength and then a small investment in one of the other stats. Faith, Int, or Dex, but no no more than one of those three. Well-timed, big big hammer strikes. I'm definitely a fan of the, uh, the melee uh, play style in Dark Souls in general, just because I think the game is most deep with regards to the, the dodging and timing of attacks and such that way. What am I taking for... I think we're taking card draw, yeah? Good old card draw. Meister Buddha, thanks for 28 months of support. And oh, Malik is here. Son of a gun. You're telling me we could have had sketches of salvation and gotten rid of every imp all in one go. And then had giant large stone sweepers. Dang it. Absolutely dang it. That said, I think this might be the one time we could actually handle judgmental fittings. So maybe let's try that. I'm kind of down, honestly. That's very cool. So you're allowed to take all, all three of these if you want to. She gives you a, a trinket that has a penalty for two battles. And if you can survive the penalty, then you get a reward. Or you can keep the penalty if you really want it. Mintberry Dows wants a dad joke for the crowd. You got it. What do you find at the very end of a Canadian train? A camoose. That's what I got for you. I'm going to take judgmental fittings. I don't ever remember actually doing this. Enemy units have one damage shield, meaning they completely ignore the first time they take damage. This is, generally speaking, terrible. And I think I might also take Corrupted Cloud. Four damage to all of our units every turn. Let's do it. I don't think I'm going to grab the Broken Wheel, though. But we could. That would let us kill all of our imps and train stewards. Essentially purge all of these cards for free. Although I'm a little bit worried we might lose one of the icy Silophytes. If I, uh, if I do that. With the Damage Shield and the Corrupted Cloud, I think we're going to lose one of our, our super powerful units. So I'm going to not take that last option. We're going to purge the train stewards the normal way. Yeah, most likely to bosses, exactly. 
too likely. Have I ever taken the Broken Wheel? Yes, Broken Wheel is arguably the easiest take of the three and is obscenely strong, allowing you to get many, many removals for free if you can finagle it correctly. My opinion on Beneath Orissa. I have not looked at uh, that game a whole lot. Just uh, played a, a very, very brief amount. And it seemed like a somewhat interesting spire-like. A bit off-put by the visual style of it. The I both like and dislike the animations for when you play cards in that game. It, it, it feels very cool and, and free-flowing. Like, the, the animations and the playing of cards are, are so linked. But if you were to... Like, once the novelty of that wears off, it's kind of annoying. Faley says, I once took two of three Malika's bad things, and then when she came back, kept one of them on purpose. So, curious if we'll end up doing that on this run. Also curious if it's worth taking a hundred gold from the Divine Boons, going into a Merchant of Trinkets floor next floor. I'm going to do that. Who cares if I have 105 shards? What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, and see, this is also why I didn't want to take the third... Penalty from Malika is uh, this trial, I think, would be pretty impossible if I wasn't allowed to lose either of my sweepers. We can lose one of them here. That's fine. It's kind of nasty, actually. This boss gets multi-strike at 100. This boss is an important one to set up on the bottom floor because of the strength gain as you climb. Minus 30, jeez. I actually might have hosed myself here a bit. Let's hope not. You get a damage shield too? That's rude. <laughs> That's just rude. All right, you're in front of tank. Please don't die too hard. Worrisome. Definitely worrisome. I've overdid it here. Oh god. <laughs> Help! Help, I've made a mistake. Yeah, we're gonna need some armor here. You stay alive for a little longer, please. I also want to bust through those uh, damage shields. This is the better way for the moment. I actually don't have any way to heal, right? Oh god. We might actually just be straight up dead. I thought we could handle spikes. We could not handle spikes. There's way too many units in this uh, combat. Mistakes have been made. Uh, I don't see an easy way out of this, huh? No, hold on. Okay, that's a slight improvement. Just having this unit alive for the final wave is kind of important. Oh yeah, we're taking four per turn, too. 
I understand. The end of turn. Seems kind of grim. Oh, they die too. Oh, God. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, mistakes have been made. Mistakes have been made. Nine by three. What's this guy's attacks? Spooky. I got nothing. I got nothing. We're dead. All right, well. We got in our, uh, yeah, a little over our heads here. GG. GG. Think this might have won without the spikes trial? I think so, Carissa. I think so. I, without the spikes or without Malika's penalties, but not with both. It was actually the, the combination of both. And what I failed to factor was that the damage shield meant we were taking an additional 12 damage from spikes per turn. And that was the, that was the actual problem. Whoops. Got overzealous there. But that's okay. The run was already uh, fudged, as far as I'm concerned. The moment we didn't take Sketches of Salvation, that run got ruined. I won't make that mistake again. Was it worth taking the damage shield? No, I just wanted to uh, flex on the spire. and the Or not the spire, on the monster train. But the monster train flexed on me instead. Yes, Broken Ace, like Hades' Pact of Punishment. The, the difficulty layers are multiplicative on one another. And that's how they get you. And no, we're not playing random random today. Or perhaps ever again. Random random is banned. It's terrible. It's gone. Now we just we need to get new combos, so no more random. These are both terrible. I'll take Titan's Claws. When is Golden Vault good? When you can generate money with abilities. We had a run that was able to defeat the last divinity single-handedly with the pyre, because we were able to manufacture tens of thousands of gold. Hate both of these lines. Ugh. Let's try out royalty. I'm pretty sure it's terrible, but we'll give it a shot. Golden Vault is lose 25 per hit against the Pyre, regardless of the damage value. So Shortail Queen wants to have units summoned on her floor. It's not that good here. Put you up top. Crazy lady. Oh, right. The damage shield on Slay plus Spike's interaction is fun. here. Can't play both of these. Do it that way. Nothing consumed. Units die means we can get more units summoned for Shardtail Queen. Not necessarily a bad thing.
<laughs> this could be a bit of an issue, though. Currently, the archer kills, so that's good. Put you behind, and they both die. Good. Okay, we'll take another three damage, but that's fine. Give you some more armor. Nice is nice. I guess we'll just summon this for the 10 attack power on the queen. Could maybe be a jump block as well. Not having a way to kill this backline archer is a bit of an issue here. Hmm. Maybe more than a bit of an issue. Okay, we're fine. Spooky. I think I like Vent more than Molting Imp as a way to deal damage to backline enemies. And I'm quite happy with an Ice Tornado. Deal 20 damage to a random enemy, enemy unit three times. This has the Permafrost keyword, and if it is retained in our hand, it will become zero cost, which is excellent news. Excellent news. Truly wonderful. All right, we need to get a unit and upgrade that unit. I think we'll go Merchant of Steel. Yeah, we're going to go Merchant of Steel here. Pretty awkward start. Dog Barker, thank you so much for the gifted sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, Despot22. It offered a sweeper again, but it's a much crappier sweeper than last time. Encant seems better than before. Got lots of zero-cost spells, two offering tokens, two fortifies, foregone powers. That makes Siren of the Sea pretty reasonable. I should have looked at the Merchant of Steel upgrades. I don't remember. Oh, no, no, there was a large stone. I did. How do I feel about large stone? It's fine. Fine is what it is. Not particularly good, not particularly bad. Laertes, thank you so much for the five months. So we'd like large stone, ideally multi-strike. Quick can also be acceptable. Sure. I want an imp with health. It's worth thinking about. I'll take one. And we get offered endless. Which we can put on the impish scholar if we want to. Hmm. That's a good merchant steal. Feels like a trap now most times. The extra capacity cost is uh, definitely tough. Hmm. Some other options too. Will I play Wild Frost again? Yes. Yes, I will. You know, I've got an idea actually. Try this. This creates an endless imp that, when summoned, can returns a random consumed spell and deals 40 to the front enemy unit, as the queen's impling infusion is four times their usual effect. Pretty strong.
Okay, let's go. Unit draft, looking pretty important at the moment. And I think we can handle 10 armor with our super-powered units. What consume spell, though? That's just the thing. We get to choose the one and only spell we want to bring back over and over again. Hmm. Yeah, Shardtail Queen behind Siren of the Sea is going to be quite terrible. We want to put the Endless Imp with the Shardtail Queen. do this question mark yeah okay, steward up top Enemy's gonna do one damage to the pyre, which I'm okay with. Imp down bottom. Armor stuff happens here. Play this, play this. This middle floor is a bit of a problem. Ah, but Ice Tornado will save the day. Got it. No Pyre damage. I might need to use Ice Tornado down here, question mark. Seems like it might be important. Siren's not going to win this fight single-handedly, huh? Hmm. All right, we better play this on the bottom floor, I think. Get rid of those stinky backline units. Does 20. We need to do a little bit more here. Okay, not bad. How much is this game? I want to say 20 or 30 bucks full price, regularly on sale for 10 bucks or less on Steam. here. $25 currently at base price. So 25 base definitely goes on sale for, for cheap on our semi-regular bases. Champ seems like garbage. I would, broadly speaking, somewhat agree, but uh, the short tail queen does have some things she can do. Mage and Crypt Builder. I mean, Crypt Builder with two offering tokens is amazing. The attuned keyword means this will be played for free if the card is discarded. I want that. Ah, good old Rail Beater. Applies melee weakness to the unit you hit. Horn Warrior has innate multi strike. We already upgraded our Siren. Although kind of non-committally. Titan Sentry is a good bottom floor unit. Hmm. Am I going to a hell vent? 
How important is the last Divinity DLC? I think it's quite important for this game. Radically and totally transforms how the game plays. Fragile's pretty bad to put on uh, Siren here. I'm looking for ways to get the Siren to attack more times. The Titan Sentry might just be really nice. Try a Titan Sentry as part of our light up here. I don't know if this is going to be correct, but what I want to do. And I guess that means I have nothing to Hellvent. Unless I'm self infusing here, which I don't plan on doing. No. Okay. Ooh, add a random imp unit to your hand every turn. That's quite powerful. Or Kinstone Totem, when a card is discarded before the end of our turn, which happens pretty often. Gain one Ember, giving us more Ember to play with. We actually don't have a lot of things to spend that Ember on, is the problem. Give me Imps. It's back! Oh wait, no, this is a different event. It's not back. It's a Rail Spike. Well, now I have something to spend my ember on. An Awoken Rail Spike. Draw X and apply minus one cost to those cards is always tempting. The Stygian Spike can do stuff also, but Awoken Rail Spike really is the, the, the strongest and breakiest of them. Chomperer. So, Daedalus is constantly summoning bombs onto the battlefield here. We're going to need the Siren of the Sea to actually scale to win. So, let's do that. Quite a lot of stuff going on down here. Titan Sentry seems like a good damage taker for the Siren. It's also going to apply a lot of Frostbite to the boss this turn. And I see we got another Pirate Chomper. Perfect. Perfection. These can be unplayed, I suppose. We'll wait for this to become zero cost. Win with every clan combination in one streak, a 60 streak. That's quite the win streak. Not impossible, mind you, but quite a challenge for sure. Do the summon thing. Kia. Armor to the Pyre Chomper, not the Short Tail Queen. Oops, that's fine. Yeah, it seems ultimately fine. It's 
It's definitely a deck that would actually appreciate a way to KO its own units so we can create more capacity. Like one of those Imp Sacrifice cards, for example, would be quite good. Or perhaps we simply want to cross path into the uh, Imp Killing version of our champ. That might also work. Daedalus versus the Siren of the Sea with the big stat buffs. Not enough to just win, unfortunately. But we've got some options. Have some stats. Any chance of doing a Monster Train Ladder Challenge? Uh, Sanguine Penguin, people were talking about uh, that channel in chat back when he streamed regularly, did a challenge inspired by our Ladder Challenge in Monster Train. I don't see myself doing uh, that kind of challenge. Monster Train to me feels like uh, a game more for experimentation and... trying to find unique and creative ways to win, and then about uh, stringing those wins together. Uh, for reference, the latter challenge being a, a challenge that tried to win streak all the different difficulty levels of Slay the Spire together. So the equivalent would be trying to win streak Covenant 1 through Covenant 25, or perhaps doing so while rotating through all the clans at the same time. Hmm. I'd infuse the Titan Sentry into the Siren of the Sea. That'd be interesting. Have you ever, have you ever finished a ladder challenge in Spire? Asks Momentum. Yes, we've done so, I think, now five times successfully. Hmm. So I'm going Merchant of Magic, Unstable Vortex, Merchant of Steel, Unstable Vortex, if I understand this correctly. We do have a Divine Temple next floor, huh? Action spell weakness is interesting. We're going to skip these mixed feelings here. More unit capacity could be very valuable for a deck like this. Let's do that. Or that's not what I meant to click on. Ah, no, whatever. My colors are wrong. Los Riantos, thanks for 45 months of support. Good to see how much the stream has improved. Thank you. And Malika's back. Should we dunk our run again? Except we could actually use Broken Wheel meaningfully if we wanted to. Certainly I'm not taking the uh, damage shield, but um, Corrupted Cloud could be something. I think we're going to take the Broken Wheel. I've got to fix getting Fell's Remorse somehow. So we'll just be really ambitious here. We do get the Imperialist version. Kill all impudence. We now have a way to kill our imps intentionally.
permafrost, you say? It's kind of cool on Crypt Builder. But only kind of. Are we the baddies? We might be. How am I going to win this next fight? That's my next question. I think the answer is we probably don't. Spell chain. Well, I have to know if this works. Good luck to us. Yeah, that's right. We need to not play the Transcend Imp in either of the next battles. Uh, but the Endless Imp is going to be pretty key here to winning. Heaven Seal seems pretty impossible to deal with. No way. We're done taking trials while doing Malika's stupid nonsense. It's difficult enough as is, thank you. I think. There. Good. Guess we might as well put both of them up there. Let's see how this goes. One pyre jumper, please. So what I wanted to know was, uh, does Ice Tornado create a free copy of itself? Yes. Oh my god, I love it. Cool. That is awesome. All right, what we're going to do is put Train Steward down here. You and you go here. Brilliant. Although maybe not killing any of these enemies was a bit of a mistake. Let's see that we have issues going on. You can get KO'd just fine. Lock some hits for me, please. Good work. So some of these units are coming back, some are purged forever. It depends on which unit we lost. To lose one or more of these train stewards up top. 
Not 100% sure how to achieve that, though. Hmm. I don't see a safe way to do it. Yeah, next combat might be the way to do it. Which is pretty whatever. We can at least get rid of this impling. It is imperative that we get these cards removed. Okay, Pyre Chomper plus Awoken Rail Spike equals hot nonsense. Don't do that much damage to the boss currently, which is slightly concerning, but I think uh, a Woken Rail Spike will change things a bit for us. Oh my. We got another Pyre Chomper. Let's go. Bonk. Now we're talking. Oh, that's going to be a lot of Slay procs, though. I'm cool with that. Oh, yeah, Siren gets Purge doing that. Oh, man, I'm not in the right headspace for this game, looks like. Dang. Maybe I should just go back to bed. <laughs> that's how I'm feeling. But where there's an Inferno and a Transcend him, there's a way. Hmm. Wait a minute. That's my Consume card. I actually, I see something happening here. I, I'm not going to despair, because I actually think we might still have uh, a plan. Although the problem is I no longer have a unit to upgrade with a Merchant of Steel. Or do I? Transcend it. Did we just use, lose a unit permanently? Yes. We lost our Siren. Which again, might not be the worst thing. Multi-strike, transcend him, go! Wait, that's not what he wanted. Who even needs units? I mean, really. Had such nice things. Genuinely, though, I think we might be okay. Although Merchant of Magic might have done us a better job. Unit Schmunitz. Exactly. I guess I don't need Fortify anymore that much. It's still nice for protecting the Queen a bit. Merchant of Magic. So, minus two cost in Intrinsic. Minus two cost on the Rail Spike, please. Ready for Transcendent yet. Although I want, might want a uh, different imp merged here. Sudden so flashbacks to that one Pug Chrysalis. Flashbacks to every run I've had in Monster Train for the last three runs. Just failing to uh, do my due diligence here. Anyway. Stealth boss. Hmm. Actually seems like a non-problem to me.
I'll do this direction here. I know we lose some rally that way, but that's fine. Kill you this way. So we get to do stupid nonsense now, and I love it. Deploy. Urchin spines this floor, then inferno that floor for 300 damage. And then the impling is back. Although I shouldn't have drawn there, actually. That was a slight mistake. Careful not to use the Transcend Imp. This is fine. Let's just draw a seven. Make yourself stronger. That's right, we can get this back? Oh jeez, I didn't think about that. Oh my. Hmm. Potential infinite, you think? With the transcend dip? You might be right. If we can consistently draw into a way to kill the Imp, you mean Inferno. You mean my zero-cost Inferno. That I'm going to have. Hmm. It's a three-cost Inferno until Awoken Rail Spike draws it three times. Which is not that realistic, admittedly. We could also just not play it so that we can get back the Urchin Spines, which I think I want. So I'm not going to play it for the moment. I will play Inferno here, though. Yeah, if we get a minus two cost on it, just drawing it one time is super doable. Definitely. So deal 40, create an Urchin Spines. Play the Urchin Spines, but not any abilities or spells just yet. Hmm, I was actually kind of hoping this would happen. So Crypt Builder, worst case scenario. 
could draw all the cards, but then I actually can't play them. Okay. I think this is going to work. Yes! Play Empress Scholar. Play Urchin Spines. Play Inferno. Kill everyone with a 700 damage. Rip. Ooh, and we get Tethys' Scales. Hero can't get purged, by the way. It's a non-champion that's specified by Broken Wheel. So, they're safe. They're safe. Everybody except the Impish Scholar, the Transcend Imp, and the Champ are now gone from the deck. Maybe I didn't want to remove one of those other Imps, but I'm okay with this. Collect. Hmm. So you said if there was a way to reliably kill that Imp, we might have an infinite? That's what you're telling me. Second Impish Scholar can also do some stupid nonsense. But I think just having the important work is all we need here, right? I'm pretty sure this will work. Infinite. A Transcend Imp is already the second Impish Scholar, that's right. Do I want a Cuddle Hex? Cuddle Hex is kind of neat with Titan's Claws. Interesting. Yeah, this is such a cool run. I think we've actually, even though I, I blundered our way into this position, I think it's actually going to work out really well for us. I mean, how often do I even get to use Cuddle Hex for cool things? Come on, Cuddle Hex. You're cute. And Malika is here. You only won because I went easy on you. Claim your prize. Get Immortality Potion. Non-morsel units are endless. All of them. The, ch the Champ. Uh, the Transcend Imp. All of it. You could also keep Broken Wheel if you really wanted to. But Endless Transcend him, let's go. And that means I don't need the Merchant of Steel. Let's just go Merchant of Magic now. Conserve Ember between turns, or with Wing Clippings, consume spells of a chance to not consume. Hilariously, our infinite is going to require that we not discard cards. We need need them to be consumed in order for the um, Impish Scholar to return them. So let's go Unbroken Horn here. Is Holdover meaningful at all? Holdover important work is better? I think we want to hold over important work. Although if we end up with an infinite, holdover is not going to matter. Still seems good. I do not want to add consume to more spells. That seems quite bad. Uh, we could Energy Discount Inferno by two at a Divine Temple, or we can just buy two minus one costs. Make it free that way. That's a winner. That's a winner. That's a big winner. And I'm going to remove one Korgon power here. Yep. 
Yeah, this is going to be an obscenely broken run now. And you play your third card of the turn, draw one. Or playing a spell deals two damage to a random enemy unit. Uh, champ attack power is almost useless on Shard Tail here. Let's take Winged Steel. And I am not afraid. But minus one cost on the wrong spell. I had to make uh, the Urchin Spines free once we spell weakness. We'll, uh, we'll get Inferno down the, the normal way here. Hey there, Goon the Spoon. We do sometimes post the game ahead of time in the schedule channel on the Discord. Uh, however, generally speaking, I don't strictly schedule out what games I'll be playing on what days. I, I strongly prefer to uh, just play whatever I'm in the mood for on a given day. That way I don't end up playing content that my heart's not in. Which I think is no, no fun for anybody. So all the imps that are being created by Impsicle are also endless. And that's where we're really going to be breaking things now is Impsicle plus the Endless Transcend Imp is going to be big strong. Really big strong. Here, sure. Deploy in the bottom. Why not? You're endless, so if you die, it really doesn't matter much. Bonk. play this on, unfortunately. Any fun choices here? Yeah, you can go up top now. Nine hundred damage, anyone? Clean a thousand to the front there. Woof. Spicy. I actually don't want to do that for endless units that I'm going to get back. Be careful there. Frozen transcend him. Let's go. Now they're free. Telemachus, thanks for eight months of support and the prime sub. Keep on keeping on. Appreciate you. Bonk. Beautiful, man. Oh, it's too beautiful. <laughs> Here we go. So we do the following. Your scholar. There's a walking rail spike back. 
Then import and work the Impus Scholar. Play the Impus Scholar again. Play Urchin Spines. Hmm, I just get important work for this to work, I think. Oh, we're already just winning. I can just play Inferno now. I can do so much more on this turn, but I win. All right, well, Fel gets seven turn boss rushed. Now that we have essentially no units left in the deck, that's pretty absurd. Oh my goodness. Consume, discard your hand, draw five, says Deep Offering. Sure. <laughs> it's another consume card, but but it's a good one. I think, anyway. Should allow us to go deeper into the infinite. Yeah, we messed up the run and we've gotten we've got created a monster. What have we done? I think I want to dupe the urchin spines, right? I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, I think Transcend Imp is able to bring back multiple consumed cards at once. We don't need any of these anymore. So if I double Urchin Spines, we should be just even stupider now, right? This doesn't matter at all. Chartel Queen is not helping the, the uh, run. And I was hoping we'd find minus two costs for Deep Offering. Perfect. Perfect. All right, observe the nonsense. Chartel Queen just here for moral support. That's all she can provide, I think. Bonk. No consumed cards yet. That's right, we're always just going to draw that. It's fine. All the imps are endless, so anytime I use this, I just draw the imp I played. It's actually kind of bad. Here we are. Build your own Inferno. Here we go. Pyre Chompers here now. Excellent. Once we play this, we don't have any cards left. So get back both of these, if I understand this correctly. Yes, we get back both urchin spines. Okay, yeah, this is starting to get stupid. Very, very stupid. So now I can play... 
important work on you. Get back the rail spike. the energy in the world. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's too much, man. Here, discard this so I can draw it with the other thing. And again! Twenty-four ember. No, twenty-eight ember. Excuse me. My bad. That wasn't the correct amount, apparently. Oh my lord. Then I can do this. And then we can do this. I have all the ember now. Oh my god. What, you thought I was done? Nice try. Alright, now the Inferno is free. Kill everybody. Just because I can, I guess. For all the Chartel Queen player again. For all this imp. Can't play that imp, though. Or can I? the transcend if again <laughs> it's a real shame there's no enemies here otherwise this might actually be like really scary or effective or something I'm good. <laughs> we can, ar I guess, arbitrarily scale Shardtail Queen like this if we wanted to. Let's just uh, stop the turn, though. Yeah, and we have ice cream, too. Like, dang, dude. <laughs> it's so, it's so absurd. Just, like, absurd, absurd. Here, just everybody die for the moment. I don't need any of you. Yeah. Alright, Mr. Boss Man, good luck to you. How much damage can we do in one turn? That is the first and most important question. How much damage can we deal to this to this boost? I also suspect, suspect the answer might be all of it. Let's just have a quick look see here. Just gotta get some stuff out of my hand here.
We're actually polluting the deck with imps over time, actually. We do run out. Since all the imps are endless, there's no way to get rid of them. Which is a hilarious problem. What's the damage? <laughs> What on earth, dude? Two thousand damage. Blah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Battering Ram could be like stupid broken. If we get one armor imp. Can we one shot the divinity with this? We we might be able to beat the divinity on turn one with the right draws. More realistically, turn two or three. I'll skip the battering ram. We've got our inferno. Glacial Seal apparently has not been won with. Well, let's fix that. Do we need another stupid broken thing? I don't I don't think that we do. I think we have all the stupid broken things that we need. Fewer cards would be better than more cards. We can get rid of Vent at minimum. Nobody needs Vent. Crypt Builder can also go. It's also unnecessary. Anything I want to duplicate? Getting rid of one or more of the offering tokens also might help. They're just kind of taking up space. Can we make our imp free? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, that breaks it. Summon abilities trigger an additional time, huh? Even more armor. I don't think Railhammer does much. Could even fuse the Cuddle Hucks into the Transcend Imp if we just wanted to be more space efficient, essentially. Joss96, thanks for the Prime sub. Keep one offering token. Fifteen cards in the deck. That's not bad at all. To add 30 magic power to the ice tornado? Sure. Shards seem like they are kind of irrelevant. And heck it. Alright, Seraph, good luck. Good luck to Seraph. Soon become nothing. They're going to take that two frostbite and they're going to like it. Spell Weakness Seraph. Looks like our turn has to end here, though. I put the Shartail Queen on the wrong floor. It doesn't matter too much. Easy Frozen and Transcend Imp. Perfect. Simple Perfection.
I think we're there. Yeah, Ralph Spike always draws important work. Easy peasy. Yeah. I was wondering when we get double urchin spines. So now we just play offering token, which draws the important work, so it's still infinite. Um, now I have to play deep offering though, yes? Oh. Oh, it was not actually infinite. Oh well. Nice. Clearly the perfect amount of damage to deal. Either in victory or defeat, the divinity's endless destruction rages on. So Divinity is present on every floor simultaneously, which makes for some interesting stuff here. Put Shardtail on top here, I guess. Probably should have Ember Drain somebody else, though. That's fine. this on the top floor. There we go. Seems like some relatively important things. Specifically those cards, sure. Nice, we got Inferno also, good. you. Draw you. I'm going to try to put three cards in my hand, but there aren't three cards to put in my hand. Hmm. Let's just try playing the one urchin spines here. Mungle bet. Or did I? Ooh, now Impish Scholar is free. That's good.
those out of my hand. Looks like we're already there, but I think we can do better. Blocking the debuffs, you can't see that there's a 128 frostbite and 68 spell weakness on the divinity. I guess you can't. Oh, get out of the way. Here you go. Look at it, the power. Thought I broke the deck, instead the deck broke me. Done yet. And this Twitch chat concludes my introductory class on how to defeat the Last Divinity. Last Divinity 101. GG. Get bonked. Just do this exactly. And that's why Shartail Queen is OP.